to thank God for that. His eye is over us. He's watching us. Also appreciate um, the choir who gave us a song, Praise Ye the Lord, by Reverend Vio of Sawyer. It's our turn to sing now. And uh, we're going to start with CGS number 12, All Hail the Power of Jesus. Brother Michael Olabi is our song leader. Number 420, 420, ye servants of the Lord. 420, 420. We're listening to the tune from the pianist. I will sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. Only three we miss. Verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. 420, after the introduction. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Furthermore, we take, let's look at the Colossus 69. Colossus 69. 69, Colossus. We will take that one two times. Everyone is a very happy place. Amen. I will pray that God will help us to be there. Amen. Everyone is a very lovely place. As we read in the Bible, we believe it. Okay? Look at number two in that chorus again. Number two. Oh, my loving brother. Hmm. May God keep us loving. Oh, my loving brother. When the world is on fire, don't you want to be on God's side? We shall all be on this bosom of the Lord. Let's say this one twice. Please. Some before prayer is 658, the same book is uh, CGS, 658. 658, blessed are they in Jesus. Amen. We'll take the first and the uh, second verses standing up. The first and the second verses only we are taking. Standing up, if you can stand, please. And we'll remain standing at the end of the last verse, and after which we shall be led in prayer. 658. Let's see if our orchestra can give us a short introduction on this. 658. 658.
We shall remain standing and Brother Olaitan Abimbola will come forward and pray for us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. We thank you for your care over each and every one of us, for provision, for the gift of life, for your mercy, for your loving kindness. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for bringing us safely into the second month of 2022. All glory and honor be to your holy name. Lord, we, we have come again to you because you are the only one that can solve all our problems. Lord, you are the only way maker. Lord, you are the only promise keeper. Lord, you are the only miracle worker. You are the light that shines in darkness. Lord, we pray that you come down this morning and take absolute control of this service. Lord, we thank you for all the souls that are counted worthy already. But even this morning, oh Lord, we are looking up to you that even many souls will be counted worthy oh, of that you know, salvation that only you can give. Lord, we pray that you just come down. We pray that you open the window of heaven and just pour down a blessing that there will be no room for us to contain it. We pray for the blessing of salvation. We pray for the blessing of sanctification, blessing of the Holy Ghost baptism, of healing, of encouragement, of inspiration. Just take absolute control, Lord, so that at the end of this service, we will all have cause to say thank you that I came to this service today. Thank you that I logged on online. Or thank you that I watched this service. Do this and many more for us, O Lord. I will continue to praise you forever. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, uh, welcome to this devotional service. May God bless you all for coming. Uh, we also appreciate the internet audience that have joined us. May God bless you for doing so. We are the Apostolic Faith Church and located at number 13, Peniel Road, uh, DA5 3EP. Um, if you live local or close by or if you happen to visit, you're more than welcome to join us. We will have combined uh, prayer meeting at uh, 5 p.m. And then on uh, Wednesday, we're not having any activities again this week. Friday, we meet for virtual prayer meeting at 8 p.m. And then on Saturday, we have our morning prayers between the hours of 8 and 10 a.m. If the Lord tarries next Sunday, we have Sunday school starting at 10 a.m. for all ages, devotional service at 11.15 a.m. And then in the afternoon is the God's Love Day event, which we announced last week. That will be at 4 p.m. There was a request to fill in an anonymous questionnaire and that was distributed last week. If you haven't done so, um, you still have an opportunity to do so until the 10th of February. After that, uh, I think they'll close that um, anonymous questionnaire. Um, we are encouraged that everyone should um, respond to it, and also even our children, and also help them to do that. Instead of um, exchange of gifts, which we announced last week, uh, the welfare team here decided that they want to do it differently, and they'll give us more details to that, but all they are saying is, those that may have started looking for gifts, yes, it's okay, you've done that, you're welcome to do so, but they would want to arrange what they called acts of kindness to each other. So... I don't want to preempt the details for it, and they will tell us next week if Jesus tarries. We will continue our service with the first special, and then we have scripture reading. After that, we have the last special and the word of exhortation. God bless you. Thank you. 
taken from Ephesians chapter 6, we'll be reading from verse 12 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 12 to 18. 6, um, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fairy dirts of the wicked. 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 18, and the last verse, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints.
I'll take my opening text from the same um, book and chapter that we read from during our Bible reading, and that is um, the book of, of Ephesians, chapter 6. Ephesians, chapter 6, and I'll be reading from verse 10. Ephesians, chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Without any shade of doubt, I'm sure we know as Christians that we are up against an enemy, um, one that um, neither rests nor give up. Thank God for this time of revival. We thank God for um, the time that we spent praying all through January. Um, certainly, many battles have been won. Um, the Lord has greatly blessed us. And we're trusting him for more blessing. So it's not time for us to rest yet. We need to keep on um, so that we can get more from the Lord. Because the Lord has many more to give us. Um, there are battles that we're still fighting as individuals, as um, homes, various homes, um, that's families, and indeed as a church. We still have um, things that we are looking to God for that we want him to do for us. We have children that are not yet saved. We have those that are saved and we're looking to God for them to progress spiritually. And it's not just young people, but even old yeah. people as well yeah. um, that have one spiritual need or the other. Yes. Um, there are still people that are in the church, but they are outside already. And there are those that have outrightly left the church and we want the Lord to bring them back. Um, there are those that have completely backslid, and we want the Lord to rescue them and restore them back to the faith. Yeah. So we haven't achieved all of this yet, um, so we find that there is still more to do, and that is why we need to keep on praying. We need to keep on seeking the face of the Lord for revival. Um, revival is not a thing that happens um, just at once and then it disappears. And then we're back to our old lifestyle. No. no. Revival, particularly the type that we're looking to God for, is one that is continuous. Amen. Um, Amen. Such that at every of our services, Amen. we'll have testimonies of victory. Amen. Victory over sin. Amen. People will stand up and say, praise God, Amen. I got saved this morning. Amen. It was last week's Sunday evening that the Lord saved me. Amen. And we want to hear people testify of being sanctified, Amen. saying that I was just driving on the road, but my, I was thirsty, I was looking to God for my sanctification, and you know what? The Lord came down and sanctified me. Amen. We want people to say that I was in my room, and I was just reading my Bible and looking to God to say, God, when will you baptize me? And then suddenly, the Spirit came down down and God took over. We want to hear such testimonies. Amen. And again, more importantly, because we haven't got to our heavenly home yet, we're still on this journey. Um, Paul, as much as he did for the Lord, could still say that his hand had not reached it and that he was still striving. Yeah. So we can see that, and we, I, I, I think that we're still farther than um, um, Paul got to even at the point that he was saying this. So we have a lot more to cover and to do for the Lord. Therefore, we need to step up our game. Amen. The enemy of our soul is not resting. No. Um, the devil is such that you knock him down and he stands up again. You knock him down and he stands up again. He never gives up. Therefore, we must not give up. More so that we have God that has always won every battle on our side. Amen. So we want to keep on trusting him and keep on looking to him until we have complete victory. Amen. So this morning, we want to look at an account in the Bible of um, the children of Israel who faced um, a similar battle like we are facing today, but they trusted the Lord. Um, they, they fought this battle. The Lord won for them. 
eventually, but um, the, we will see how that the enemy of their soul did not give up. He kept fighting at every point until the Lord eventually gave complete victory. Turn with me to um, the book of Ezra. The book of Ezra. Now, um, prior to this time, um, the nation of Israel had been taken into slavery by Babylon. Um, they were taken as captives to Babylon and um, they were there serving as slaves. But the Lord had spoken before then through Jeremiah and Isaiah that Jerusalem would be rebuilt again. And that the temple that um, the Babylonians had destroyed would be rebuilt again. Um, this prophecy was going to be fulfilled. Just like we know that every jot of word that God says must be fulfilled. Amen. And so... God stirred up this king called Cyrus to say that God had laid it in his heart. He was um, um, an unbelieving king. He was um, not an Israelite. But somehow, and remember that God had said that this would happen. So he, he stood up and said he wanted as many of the Israelites as God would have laid in their hearts to return to Jerusalem to build the temple of God. And so um, the people decided to embark on this journey under the leadership of Zerubbabel. Let's read Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 1, 4, and 5. Ezra chapter 4, verse 1. Now, when the, now at this time, the Israelites had now, a few of them, had returned under the leadership of Zerubbabel, as I said, to um, Jerusalem. And the intention was to build the temple that had been destroyed. Remember that glorious temple that Solomon built for the Lord? At this time, it had been destroyed. And there was no place for the Israelites to worship again. But these few decided to return. And as they returned, the enemy decided the work was not going to be done. Um, Chapter 4 of Ezra, I read from verse 1. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, now I jump to verse 4, and then I'll read verse 5. Verse 4, then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now, at this time, they had returned, and they had started building the temple. But then, the strangers that had been imported to the land to occupy the land while the Israelites had been taken to captivity decided that, no, this place will not be built. And so they raised up opposition and somehow they succeeded in persuading the king that was reigning then to say this work must be stopped. So they prevailed and prevented the rebuilding of the temple um, because they wrongfully accused the Israelites. They said they, they were building this place so that they could rebel against um, the king of Babylon. And so the king wrote to say, now in Ezra chapter 4 verse 21, Ezra 4.21, the king said this, I, but the king was now giving instruction to those that wrote the letter, um, give ye now commandments to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Eventually, this king died, and no new commandment was given by him for the work of the temple to resume. And so the work was stopped for some time. But we thank God that God stirred up some prophets and they prophesied to the people. You know, we praise God as an organization. The Lord saw the need for us to seek him afresh and because as it were, we needed God like uh, we needed him to manifest himself like the days of old that we have read about, that you and I have heard about. And so we decided that we're going to build this temple for the Lord 
but the enemy is raising up his ugly head. And that is why I said at the beginning, it is not time for us to rest yet. Because there are still battles to fight and victories to win. So the work resumed again, but the enemy persisted. And this was still under the leadership of Zerubbabel. You know, praise God for those prophets who decided that this work must resume. In Ezra chapter 5, I read verse 3. Ezra chapter 5, verse 3. It says, at the same time came to them, to um, 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 Tatnia, governor, on this side the river, and um, Shethabosnai, and their companions, and said thus unto them, Who has commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? So not only was the temple being built at this time, even the falling wall of Jerusalem was to be raised again. But the enemy came again and said, No, that will not be done. So they ganged up against um, the children of Israel, at this time, Darius was the king in, in Babylon. So they petitioned him to say, look, these rebellious people have started building the temple again, and we need the work to stop. So Darius decided to search the Chronicles, that is the book of record of the king, and he found there that it was Cyrus the king that gave an instruction that this work should start and the temple of the Lord should be built. And so he wrote and disagreed with the petitioners, with those liars that wanted the work to stop. He wrote in verse 7 of Ezra chapter 6, Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. In verse 15, And this house was finished on the third day of the month Ada, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. Amen. So, if the Israelites had given up, when the enemy first protested, when they got the king that was reigning then on their side to say the work should stop, the temple wouldn't have been rebuilt again. But praise God. You know, every time, every generation, God will always have his leftovers. Those that will spark a revival, that will decide that, yes, the world is going this way, but I am choosing to go that way. I will go the way of the Lord. Those that will swim against the tide and say, yes, I know everybody is going the easy way, but I am choosing to follow the Lord. And the Lord will use such people to start up the rest, and then revival will start. Like the dry bones um, that Ezekiel saw in that valley, um, the Bible tells us that bone began to join to bones. And you know, flesh began to come, to come upon them just because revival was sparked by the Lord. Um, the Lord is helping us. We prayed throughout the month of um, January and the Lord has started something among us. We heard testimonies of those that, even petitions of people saying, God, I want to be saved. Jesus, save my soul. And we heard testimonies of people that got saved by the grace of God, and the Lord is still on the throne. He's still working. But the enemy of our soul, he will seek to cause us to rest. He will, he will make us to believe that now we have arrived. It's time to rest, but it is not time yet. It's not time to seek repose yet. This is a time we need more strength, more courage, more grace, more energy, more determination than ever before that this work of the Lord must be finished. Amen. And after that they built um, the temple, now the walls of Jerusalem needed to be built. And again, because God um, does not start a project and fail to finish it. When God starts a project, he sees it through. He's the best project manager. And so the wall of Jerusalem needed to be built. And God again stirred up some people. Um, then came the second expedition, under the second expedition, which was led by Ezra. Remember, the first one we looked at, the first expedition was under Zerubbabel. Now the second expedition was, was under Ezra. But what did Ezra do? He restored the worship of God. The temple had been built, but the worship of God, all the sacrifices that God um, commanded the children of Israel to do were yet to commence, and God used Ezra to do that. And then there was need to build 
the wall of Jerusalem, and God stirred up Nehemiah, who also was a slave in a foreign land. Um, he became sad when he heard the news of what was happening back home in Jerusalem. You, as a member of apostolic faith, that you have read all that you have read about the church apostolic faith, that you have experienced all that you have experienced about the church apostolic faith, there must be something in you saying that, where is the God of old? Yeah. Where, is, where are our tears of old? Yeah. Where is our tarrying at the altars of prayer? Yeah. That after sermon, after every sermon, yeah. before the invitation is given, yeah. the altars are filled up, yeah. and the people of God are praying. Yeah. They are traveling in prayer. Yeah. Something in you should be asking, what is happening to my life? Where is the God of old? I remember very well that I did a job and I was always doing overtime, just trying to make ends meet. And then, even on Sundays, during, um, after Sunday school, I would steal out and go to work. But one of the ministers of God was always on the lookout for me. And then one Sunday, I would always sit at the back there with my um, backpack. One Sunday, as I stood up to sneak out, he came out and met me outside. Oh, yes. And I said, brother, where are you going? I said, oh, I'm going to work. He said, why don't you give Sunday up for the Lord? Amen. The Lord will provide. Amen. The Lord will feed you. Um, and I scratched my head. I said, yeah, yeah, I understand. But I needed to go. And then I went. Until one day, I was on the shop floor working, and there was this young man that had just been recruited who was also working with me. We were working together. I wasn't his boss. I wasn't his supervisor. We were just shop floor boys working together. And this was a Sunday. And this boy stood and said, Ah, God, I should be in church now. What am I doing here? That was the message I needed to hear. This young man was probably of the age of my second son, or maybe a little older than him. And I said, Francis, what are you doing here? And then, praise God, one of the evenings, a sermon was preached. I can't remember what the topic was. And I went to the altars of prayer. I prayed my heart out that day. The person that was next to me wouldn't even hear a word from my mouth. But heaven was hearing my cry. My nostrils were blocked. I was crying unto God. God, you must change my course. You must change my time. Do you know God provided a new job for me? It was a part-time job. And yet, I earned more than all the overtime and the rest I was doing on the former job. That is what God can do. That God is still alive. God has not changed. You and I might have changed. Maybe these days we are always in a hurry to go home after service. There is no time to spend on the altars. Praise God. I stayed back here last Sunday. I was doing some work in the office. And as I was about to go home, I heard somebody praying. I heard somebody, and I wanted to know what was happening. I thought the person was upstairs. I went upstairs and found that he was actually here at the altar. He was one of our ministers. He was traveling and prevailing in prayer. I said, praise God. The God of old is still the same. It's the same God that we have today. And so, um, um, Nehemiah decided, we're going to build the walls of Jerusalem. And then the enemy raised up his head again. In verse 10 of Nehemiah chapter 2. When Sambalat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Chapter 4, verse 1 of the same Nehemiah. But it came to pass that when Sambalat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a first go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Verse 9 of chapter 6. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Amen. That must be our cry to God. 
No discouragement. Maybe what you're looking to God for, you haven't got it yet. Don't give up. It's time to step up your game and seek the face of the Lord. And the Lord will hear and answer you. God that had you here, Nehemiah here. He knew that there was no help coming from any other place except from God. He said, God, strengthen down my hand. In verse 10, afterward I came unto the house of Shemaiah. Now, this is even in the house of God. I came into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of um, Mehatabil, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. Verse 11. Hear the, the answer of a wise man. Amen. And I said, should such a man as I flee? Right. And who is there that being as I am will go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Amen. Don't hide for the enemy. Take the battle to the enemy. Amen. Fight him. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. A, a, Christians are not known to be cowards. Christians are people that are able to take the battle to the enemy and fight the enemy. Verse 12. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. Don't be surprised. Even in the house of God, yeah. the enemy may hire people yeah. and tell them, what is it? It's not, it's not that difficult. Yeah. All this church, 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 church all the time. It's, it's not that difficult. Come, come. come. We have a, there's another place. There's another church where we can go to. All this um, um, the trouble and all this, um, you must do this, you must do that in your church. Come to our place. There you can dance, you can enjoy all the rest of the thing. And they will tell you they also know the Lord. Be careful. Amen. Be careful. You know what you know. Yes. And God knows what you know. Yes. Yes, Don't give up. Yes. Don't let the enemy lure you away. Yes. Don't let the enemy rob you of eternity. Yes. Verse 13. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin. Did you see that? Yes. Nehemiah felt if I would do as this man who was persuading me to do, I would have sinned. He said, and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me. But God forbid. Amen. Victory was won at last. And the wall was completed. We will win our victory. We will prevail against the enemy. We will make heaven at last. You will not leave this church. I will not leave this church. We will not leave Jesus Christ. We will hold on to him to the end. How did they prevail? It was through prayer. Persistence. You know? And not just that, they were always on the lookout. Yeah. At some point, yeah. when the enemy decided, you know what, we will catch them on our ways. And the news um, got to the ears of Nehemiah. He told his people, when you get home, go and read it. Yeah. From verse 13 to verse 17 of Nehemiah chapter 4. He told them, arm yourself. Yes. The enemy arm. is around. Right. Yeah. With one hand, they held their sword yes. and their shield. Yeah. And with the other, they were building. Yeah. When the enemy saw that, the enemy knew that they were prepared. And the enemy gave up the fight. The enemy of our soul is there. He is still fighting the battle. But victory is sure. Because we have Christ on our side. We want revival. We need revival. We want to be hearing testimonies like of old. That, that, have you heard some great testimonies of restitutions that people did in this church? Restitutions that you will think... Can somebody do that and remain alive? When you meet Christ, Amen. when you have seen him, Amen. when you have an encounter with him, your life will not remain the same. Amen. Nobody, nobody will be able to persuade you to leave the, to leave the Lord because you are sure of what you have encountered. Amen. You can ask me one million times. My story will not change about my salvation. And I will let you know that come rain or shine, by the grace of God, I have decided to follow Jesus. And I am going to follow him to the end. And I am not resting yet. Why must you rest? Come to the altars of prayers. Come and seek the Lord. It is not time to repose yet. The Lord is our leader. And he will fight our battle. God bless you.
Jesus, we thank you. We magnify your name. We pray that you help us. Help us to hold on. Help us to fight on. Thank you for the victories you have won for us as we have come around these altars, Lord. We pray that you save us. Pray that you sanctify. Pray that you fill with the Holy Ghost and fire. Pray that you attend to every need for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.